Well, this may be a short video. <coughs> Blumhouse's 2017 Netflix film, Stephanie. At least I think it was straight to Netflix. It was straight to video, but it is Blumhouse. Boy, does it feel it. It's a supernatural horror film. And I don't really know what to say about it. It was directed by Akiva Goldsman, who received an Oscar and a, and a Golden Globe for the screenplay of A Beautiful Mind. Okay. And he also did work for Da Vinci Code and Angels and Demons. Writer, he was writer, what? This guy was the writer for Batman and Robin. Batman and Robin, okay. And Batman Forever, okay. I'm sold. <laughs> uh, he also wrote Rings. Oh, he directed this. And Winter's Tale, which I believe... Is, okay, that's not the one I was thinking of. Okay, so he's written a lot of bad films. But Stephanie, it also stars Frank Grillo and a Torv as married couple with their parents. And their daughter is Stephanie, played by Sheree Crooks. Who I can't click on, so I guess she hasn't done anything else. But she basically looks like that young contortionist girl that's in the Sia videos. This is like other movies of 2017 and 18, where it's like, okay, what's a good metaphorical story, like a scary aspect about raising a child? You know, those movies that got the, like, oh my God, seriously, so anxious watching this on Facebook. Bird Box, perfect example, and I hate it, Bird Box. And, uh... I gave that the uh, the oh my god can't even award for 2018 or 17 whichever year it came out. This is like that or like A Quiet Place which Quiet Place is the same thing as Bird Box but better. And I know Bird Box is based on a book. But this it's like okay what this is the first act or so of the movie focuses on this young girl Stephanie who's home alone she's doing whatever she wants. Brushing her teeth with giant gloves, toothpaste, eating junk. There's a scene where she's just screaming, shit, shit ass, ass shit. There's no one else in the neighborhood. There's hints at some sort of uh, apocalyptic disaster, but it doesn't come out and say what it is. And it's her just doing day, just being in pajamas and doing whatever she wants. The only weird thing we get is that there's some sort of force watching her and preventing her from things. She talks to her stuffed animals. She does tea parties. She keeps her dead brother's corpse in his bed, which she will abuse or beat with a bat when she's angry or hold his hand when she's feeling sentimental. And yeah, there's like this dark, ominous force that manifests itself with uh, whooshing sounds and jump scares. The jump scares in this is not as bad as films I've done recently. But you know that's all this film has when it literally, under the summary on Wikipedia, it says, These scenes end with a jump scare. Uh... Eventually, the parents come back. They tell her that there's a monster out there that feeds on bad vibes. Anger, sadness, rage, whatever. So they talk about controlling their emotions. Which sounds like a decent idea. I mean, quiet place. Okay, we, we that was noise. 
why not do one that can somehow sense and feed off vibes? But it doesn't quite go that direction. I don't care if I spoil this. And also, this movie is full. I understand it's got a video on demand uh, budget. But the CGI is shoddy as hell. Whether it be in her dreams. Like, there's a dream where she sees her dad. And his head turns all the way around. It's like, yes, darling, or whatever. And it looks very CGI. There's even a part where, like, a rabbit or whatever gets thrown through the window and is dead. And then she goes and beats the brother with a bat. Because it's his fault. Anyway, she... She seems perfectly happy and normal, but they seem kind of scared of her at the same time. They're always telling her to stay put, asking if she's okay. The, I mean, this one review on the cover says unpredictable and emotionally charged. I guess so, because it's going that quiet place, bird box route of what if this was your kid? Which is why I think if this movie was more popular, you would see Facebook flooded with, oh my God, seriously, you guys can't even just sweating watching it. Cause, and, then, and then that person has a reason to talk about their kids and remind you that they have kids. I've been on Facebook a lot. <laughs> so that's just me being cynical. Um... CGI is really shoddy. Just there's not much to talk about. And then the whole revelation at the end is basically a Shyamalan twist. Which, if you don't want to know what it is, I guess spoilers. It's on Netflix. Have at it. It's a Shyamalan twist. There are no monsters. Somehow, something is getting into kids all over the world. Or it's just what kids are. Either a virus, an alien, a supernatural force. It, if it comes out and says what it is, it, it doesn't say, or at least I missed it. I, I just worded that weird. If it does say it, I missed it. Not if it says it, it doesn't say it. That's stupid. But we get... You know, the parents are watching the news say that other parts of the world this is happening and the kids are the monsters there's a monster inside them that when they get angry or overwhelmed or filled with rage or sad or upset this giant this like dark force is manifested in this disembodied tentacle shadows I guess if there is a real monster, we don't ever see it, which I thought was the smartest choice that this film made. Is that if there is something, it doesn't show it. Unless it is just technically shadow, shadows that can somehow grab people. But they do have telekinesis. Because it shows, because her parents, the reason why she was left alone was because her parents abandoned her. We're supposed to believe some sort of apocalypse. They went to go find food or help, and then they come back for her. And we get little hints, like we see the mother changing, and she's got like this bruise with a bunch of spots. Turns out, the day the parents left, she was carving pumpkins with her brother. Her brother fucked up her pumpkin, and she went to go charge at him. And she snapped his neck with her telekinesis. Struck the mother. So, it's a dark force with tentacles. Which I'm guessing why it looks like holes. Because like the suction cups. But that's got to be that there's some sort of physical thing there. But the fact they only show the shadows. I thought was a smart idea. Because it would only look stupid. No matter what they came up with. No matter how they did it with the CGI, it's going to look shoddy and silly. Just let your mind do the work. And it's not half bad looking with just the shadows. But yeah, her her eyes go black. It's kind of veiny and poison looking, all Silent Hill looking. 
it's otherworldly voice. Her irises get like a tentacle design. Kind of talks in the third person like, yes, I am Stephanie. So it's like, oh, okay, so we get another little girl with telekinesis, but it's not as good as Carrie. In fact, it, I shouldn't even bring that up because it's barely relevant. But I think it plays at first, it's just her. And then we find out, it's, I, I don't know. But then the parents, we get their doctors, no matter what they do, they try to sedate her to do it, pretty much do a lobotomy on her. We get the idea that the mother's been studying this, find out what part of the brain has that kind of emotion. But as soon as she hits her with the uh, implement, it's like she wakes up, which I liked this shot. She's face down on the surgical bed, looking up at her and out of focus, you know, we get the whoosh and the glass shattering. We just see the parents kind of go away. Of course they live. The dad's taking her for a walk, presumably to kill her. The, she starts changing, but she gets a hold of it. And then, you know, so she's fine. He, he always carries a gun with him. He's like, sure to kill me when you have the chance. So he shoots her, gets back to the house. And this was, it pretty much ends with this force completely taking over her. She kills her parents. The mother is lifted and contorted. The foreshadowed, there was a knife at the ceiling from when her and her brother were doing pumpkins. Her telekinesis shot a knife up to the ceiling. Falls down into the dad's back and with her telekinesis like drags it up his back. And then it literally just, because the news says, you know, with all this going on, scientists say euthanasia is the best way. That's why they're gonna do that. She's walking out through like the woods. They're just face down dead, being dragged behind her, Sui with telekinesis, which I, I did kind of like this shot. It's overhead, so we see her walking, two bodies dragged behind her via telekinesis, and her shadow is just tentacles. So it's like, okay, it's not showing her in that form, but that's her shadow. I thought that was a cool idea. Leaves them at this pre-made cross in the ground. I guess it was made for her. Then she walks off. She like just destroy, the rest of the houses in the neighborhood are destroyed. And it zooms out from the earth, which, you know, like the new universal thing where it shows all the lights around earth. Imagine that just fire showed children everywhere are destroying the earth with their emotions. This movie was boring as hell. The good ideas it did have, it felt too much of like a Shyamalan type of execution. Yeah, I like the idea that they didn't show whatever this thing is. If it is an actual physical thing, not just shadows like a supernatural force uh, part of me wants to think it was going down that quiet place bird box like okay the anxieties of a parent like those movies were about bringing your child into a fucked up world how do you deal with w the emotions of your child how do you be a good parent how do you take care of them that way but it doesn't come off as a clever or smart enough movie to believe that's the direction it was going. It just feels like it was, it just kind of reminds, reminds me of those movies. Which I liked A Quiet Place, not so much the look of the monsters, but I liked A Quiet Place, fuck Bird Box. I thought that was overrated. Really nothing special about this movie. The, the CGI, you know, the, noting its budget, it's, uh, on demand, made budget, it still looks shoddy and like shit. The girl, the the acting wasn't the problem. I liked the small cast. I liked it was just this girl and her parents. The acting was fine. I thought the little girl did a fine job with what she had to do. 
she seemed very natural, I guess. The movie itself, it was just, you know, okay, creepy kid mixed with some sort of possession, mixed with telekinesis. Eh. There's a lot of things thrown into it that can make you think of other films. It just doesn't seem like a good version of any of those. And really, the whole, okay, it's not an apocalypse. There is no monster. You are the monster. The, ch the child, the children are the monsters. It just had that Shyamalan twist. Because even from the beginning, you know, it's called Stephanie. You kind of get the feeling there's something up with this girl. So even if you can't predict, you know, because they try to make it sound like the monster wants you. That's what it's after. It's after children. It's like, no, it's after these emotions. Nah, it's just you. I was There's not much to say about this. I'm just going to keep repeating myself. So, Blumhouse's Stephanie. Thank God it's another Blumhouse film off my list. I'm really getting tired of it, <laughs> to be honest. But anyway, thank you for watching.